I have to warn them about the conditions on Earth. I don't know all the details. It started with a mistake. Martin and I have worked together since a film called Control, which I think is 2008. Well, we're quite different people, but a similar spirit about filmmaking stuff, quite simplistic in the sense of we like keeping it simple. That's either. It's a spaceship far away. Well, like most things in film, well, certainly with sci-fi and things like that, it's dictated to a lot by production design interior of the spaceship there's a sort of zoned area there's the sort of sleeping quarters and home areas are different to the work areas so we had always this kind of ability to fluctuate between you know a very basic cool white or warm white to a more of a turquoisey colors and cyans and stuff like that so we had everything um rgb ww so there's a bit of history for the backlit roscoe really it came through a discussion i had on a previous film and we'd made these big soft boxes with uh, sky panels. In the pre-production, I planned out a 360 degree, I think it was five or 600 foot long back projection. And we had to work out how many sky panels that we'd need to light a certain area. And then we did a test, I think with 24 sky panels behind a 30 by 20 uh, back projection screen. And it worked very well. Once the test had finished, unfortunately, the film got postponed and I left the project and started on Midnight Sky. I was showing Martin how we'd done that and he said, oh, that's exactly what we need to do the exterior snow scenes for Midnight Sky. Because they wanted to do uh, Aurora Borealis, they wanted to do night stuff, uh, day stuff, you know, horizons, all these things, which you could have done in post-production, but the problem with green screen is that you never get light transmitted from the area that you're shooting from. I thought I lost you. You don't have the ability to create a wrap around a believable sky, which you can only not only look at, but you feel in the skin. And that also is that when you look at the uh, screen itself, that it would be believable when the lights are off, that it becomes a, a dark screen, that you could do night stuff without it, you know, having to then put in another screen to get rid of the thing. So you have this amazing flexibility. So we used it for the Aurora Borealis scene, uh, where they are uh, out in the thing and they look up and see Aurora Borealis, which was one of the reasons actually we originally had that thing, is we wanted to create an effect which would play on them physically, you know, that you'd be able to see it in their eyes and their face and their skin. But then we started using it in other places as well for the Arctic's um, research centre. But yeah, anything in snow. So we used it for the night exterior. There was a wolf chase scene in, in a blizzard. Well, it was designed specifically for the uh, exterior Arctic's work for night and day, and most of it was night stuff. got a beautifully soft, huge light at the one end in which you can grade to do, you know, you can go from top to bottom, grade it down to, so it's incredible. So what we did is we did strips of truss and we ran truss and we ran uh, hoists with wires through the truss and then we picked up another truss. So we had basically strips of every, uh, I think it was two and a half meters, we had a sky panel. I think it was about 500, 600, I'm not sure. We developed another system where you just run the wires through and then you could concertina the whole system. So if you wanted to put more light at the top and less at the bottom, you could, instead of switching lights off, you just compressed and opened the whole system. And that worked very well as well, because we would say you could actually create much stronger looks. If you have uh, lines of light that are fixed, you can say, I'll switch that one off, but you don't get the, you just end up getting strips. So if we could compress them, we could actually make solid blocks of color and light at one area and then let it fall off to the bottom. We made a promise to our families. You want to be an explorer? Matt! Come to my voice! But while you're doing all that, your own life is just slipping away. That's why I have to contact them. If we hadn't been having lunch that day and I hadn't shown Martin the video of the test that we did 
six months before, you know, he might have just gone and we'd end up doing green screen. So my solution was like, why don't we create the sky, which is what we would tried to do on Death and Nile, because half the problem is if you're in an area with glass and silver and people wearing glasses and all that, and you don't feel that there's an incredible sky outside and it's just duh, because that, that's where really people start believing in what things really are. The ILM system is, you know, it's a proper LED uh, screen system, high quality, uh, high definition. So you could use it as a credible sky. Or that it would, when you're looking at a character and the, the wind light is coming through a window, it would create a credible light. So we had the higher definition ones to look at, and then we built in uh, on motors, we built on top ones that we could louver. So we, I, well, they had one that was joined together, and I asked them to split it so I could turn it and use it as skylight. Uh, and then we'd had it be able to move it up and down and introduce harder light through it as well. So what it meant was to a certain extent it uh, created the light that we wanted because it was a credible skylight. A bit like the one we'd done with the Roscoe is that you feel it in all the shadows as you can feel all the color and light in the shadows which is making, is half the problem is trying to create a credible sky dome. And it's not like a revolution in that sense but it was a revolution in my head to a certain extent of that going, that we need to introduce or reintroduce to a certain extent a little bit of theatricality. If you look backwards in cinema history, people did it all the time because of the definition of how things are in technology and in perception, is that we can be trick people a little bit and say, yes, of course, it, you know, because you see, because it, we have told you it's a snow uh, scene, you believe it. You don't have to have so much stuff. It can be it's more playing into the mind a little bit. And I think that's quite an interesting thing. There is an antenna that's stronger than ours. We get to that antenna, they'll hear us. Take a deep breath. <laughs>